Well, this is a long one. Okay, so um, I remember my father saying, it's your turn, you know, um, and my mother being a little um, nagging about, well, you know, this is my turn because you can't, you can't be gentle enough. Um, the past few nights I'd wake up and they'd try to stick me with something. And, um, you know, this time it's my mother's tucking me in and I feel my leg, I think, get stuck with my leg, get stuck with something. Um, and, you know, she's insisting that she didn't do anything but it really hurt it felt like a shot from the doctor i said it's got to be i'm a child so this is what a child thinks okay i told her see one of three things you brought a bee in here and stung me with a bee you had a needle from your pin cushion or you gave me a shot you know and as a child, I thought only doctors have shots, so it can only be a needle from the pincushion or a bee, and it stings and it's and it's swelling like a bee, so it's a bee. And my mother said, "Oh no, you don't hear any bees. Bees don't buzz at night. You know they don't, you know, sting at night. Whatever, whatever." And she's making all these excuses, and you know, about the time I start feeling really sick. And I said, you knew, you knew that I was allergic to bees. You knew this would happen to me. And that's how I passed out. I wake up in a hospital bed with like, literally with this thing on my face, breathing for me and it's down my throat and like I'm choking on it. And so they take it out and congratulate me for breathing on my own, you know, and I'm trying to, understand what's going on here why do I have this thing in my throat you know um my mother comes close to me and I keep saying no no she's the one that did this you know she, she's the one that made me like this and you know I got all freaked out with her um extended family started to visit me I kept waking up on and off throughout about a week's time and no one would tell me exactly what was going on. I had a, uh, you know, a jackass uncle that, you know, would tell me if you were a little rough for a while. But that's all he would say. You know, he said, I, I didn't think he was going to make it. But he wouldn't tell me why. And he, would, he just laughed. Um, and then um, a granny came and she knew something was really wrong. Really, really wrong. Um, and then I go to sleep and next time I wake up, it's a dream. It's in a dream, technically, at this point. I dream that, you know, I'm mean, standing in front of um, this hospital morgue, but I don't know it's a morgue. I just know it's a really interesting thing. I can only see half of it because I'm so little and short. But what I can see, the whole room is made of metal. All of it's metal. I really want to just, just go in there and explore it because it looks so odd and different, and, you know, curious. And the doctor's talking to my mother and father and, you know, then I'm like, okay, I've got to sneak in there when they're not looking. So I sneak in there, I start playing in the drawers and then, you know, I think, oh, this might be a nice place to fall asleep. And then I, you know, fall asleep and then I wake up in you know, this drawer that I, I don't know, more fascinated with than all the rest of them for some reason. And that's because that was the drawer that my body was in. My spirit had left my body and it was finding its way back to my body. That's why I was fascinated with that one drawer over everything else. So I go to sit up and bang with my head, you know, and then I realise I can't sit up, you know, and I realise I can't get out. And I start screaming, you know, and this lady comes in and, you know, she's really rude. She, she pulls me out and then I, I apologize that I'm not supposed to be in here. I still think that I was awake the whole time. I didn't realize it was a dream. So I thought that I literally walked in there 
and when I wasn't supposed to go somewhere, you know, and I, I knew I wasn't supposed to go in there and I did anyway and I, you know, you know, said, oh, I know I don't deserve, you know, a towel, but I'm cold, I'm really cozy, this is cold, can I have a towel? And she said, no, you're absolutely right, you do not deserve it. I don't get paid enough to do this and she walked out because I was crying in a mess and confused and, you know, then a nurse comes in, very nice lady, comes in, checks my vitals, which I don't know what they are, but she says, your vitals are really good. And I said, you know, what does that mean? You know, she says, it means you're healthy. That's what she said. And she looked at me like she'd seen, you know, a ghost or something because I, I, I'm not supposed to be alive, basically. Um, she gets on the phone and she's talking. She says, yeah, um, the kid from last night, the one that died in, in, in a sleep. You know, I remember her saying that. Um, and then she says, she, physically she seems fine, but mentally she's spazzing out. That's what she said, her words exactly. Um, and I was saying that I, I, I'm sorry I, I came in there when I wasn't supposed to. And, you know, and she keeps not believing me. She says, that door's locked, no one can go in there. You know how I know that you're supposed to be in here? So she said, you have something on your toe, didn't you? I said, yeah, well, yeah, but I threw it on the floor. And she said, well, everyone in here has something on their toe. And I looked to the guy lying, he's in under a blanket, he's got feet sticking out, and I can see something on his toe too. And she said, if you have one of those, if you're ever given those, even if you don't have it now, you were given it once, if you're given it once, it means you meant to be here. So that made me calm down for a little bit. But then she wanted to call my parents and said, no, no, they're going to kill me. Please don't. And that got it all again. You know, poor lady. So how much, how much patience she had with me. My family comes and my father says under his breath as he smiles, you're embarrassing me. A fake smile. You're embarrassing me. You know, and I kept telling her that they're, they're fake smiling. They do that when they're really mad. Please, please, you know, they won't kill me. Please don't, you know, send me back with them. And she said, oh, no, they're happy to see you, you know. And I just, I just knew. I knew I was in for it. Well, they locked me in my room and told me I couldn't come out for at least two, three weeks. Um, and my father said that, He'd already told everyone I was dead. And, you know, um, my, my granny had come to give condolences. And he said that she wasn't there, but I heard her voice. So I, I got too excited because she was one of the only people that were good, that weren't a part of this cult, that were actually good people that cared about other people. And she loved me, literally loved me. And I lo literally loved her. You know, she was an innocent person. And she was a good person. And I got really excited because she was the only people that cared about me. And I defied their rules. I wasn't even allowed to to eat or go to the loo. Um, well, I could go to the loo once or twice, I think. But, you know, they withheld food. They withheld a lot of things. Uh, I was allowed a little bit of water, you know. And I knew that all of that, all those privileges would go away. If I went downstairs, but I had to see whether or not I actually heard her, whether she was actually there. And she was. Um, and, you know, he, my father gets furious and he comes in and he screams at you, you embarrass me in front of my mother. You know what happens when you embarrass me in front of my mother? You know, she makes a scene. Well, she did. She called the police and, you know, um, the police wouldn't do anything so she comes back in the midst of the night and she wakes me up and i get really excited i'm like how are you here you know and she's just she, we're on a secret mission i can't tell you what it is until we get in the car but in order for you to come on it with me you have to be 100 percent quiet and so we snuck out of the house and she took me in the car i said what's the secret mission and she said how'd you like to come with me for a while? I was like thrilled, absolutely thrilled. 
and you know I thought it, it might actually work because I was a child she took me to her house um, and she uh, you know at some point she had asked me I need you to uh, well actually this was before I think this was before that um, I, I forgot that that time that she visited me she actually gave me her phone number she said if they don't let you out of your room you call me and actually that is why she came back because I called her um, and, and before that um, before she came back we had had this chat where she said what do you remember what's the last thing you remember and I finally remembered that you know the last thing that happened to me before I grew unconscious and woke up in the hospital was my mother sticking me with something and so that sent off a bunch of alarms and she had to help me remember I literally did not remember that until you know and so she had that information that she could tell the police now that she couldn't before um and so you know she's on the phone with the police now now we're at her house and you know the long drive there finally and she's talking to them about this and um you know she's saying stuff like well at least child abuse at least that but especially if not, you should be arresting them for murder you know drugs they stuck her with drugs so I didn't know the word abuse, I didn't know murder, and I didn't know drugs. And when she got off the phone, <clears throat> I asked her what to tell me what they were. And, and very reluctantly, you know, she told me everything but murder. And, you know, she, she said, I can't tell you the last one. It would ruin you. You would be afraid for life. I can't. I'm sorry. You know, and she was right. I think I would have been overly scared. I would never go to sleep at night. I would have never gone to sleep at night had I known exactly what they tried to do to me. Um, I, thanks to her not telling me I could sleep, you know, for the rest of my childhood. Um, because I never figured out exactly what it was, you know. Um, <clears throat> police came and asked me questions. This guy actually gave me a teddy. He was really nice, extremely nice. And, you know, I remember him telling me, you know, no, adults actually do have needles. Some, you know, do have needles, not just doctors. And that kind of made me wonder, okay, maybe it was a needle. I just never knew exactly what the needle had in it. Um, they confiscated two needles um, from uh, the house and it came back as um, unidentified compound. Unfortunately, they were testing for drugs, so that's what my granny thought. She thought it was drugs. Um, she assumed it was drugs. They should have tested for poison. If they tested for poison, they would have found something. Again, just how narrow it was that they almost had enough to convict them of murder. And because they barely had enough lacking, the guy in charge would not allow them to to investigate further so the guy that had given me the teddy was in tears he he, he said you know uh, i have a child your age and you know i just uh, i i want you to live with your granny but i don't make the rules i legally can't i remember my granny having to say goodbye to me and she said you know i legally can't and i i didn't understand legal you know um i legally can't keep you you know, she was in tears and, you know, that was just bawling, praying. And I remember her praying, um, you know, that if, if um, things don't work out, that, um, quote in her words, God protect me. If things didn't work out, um, she never told me. She died being one of the only people who knew the secret. Very rare occasions I was allowed to visit her. And she kept that secret because she thought it would ruin me. She thought it would make me too afraid. Even though as an adult, you know, I would have benefited from knowing. She just didn't have the heart to tell me. In my life, my granny is really the only hero that I had. The only one that loved me uh, in the family. Really my only friend. She died before I figured it all out, so she died before I could thank her for what she did.
too young to understand. My only regret is not being able to thank her before she died.